I was talking to you about how I'd had a medical appointment where uh, an intimate exam was done without asking for my consent first. It wasn't done against my will. I wasn't forced or anything like that. It's just I wasn't asked, which meant that it happened because somebody else was in charge. And I spoke about that in the last video and I posted online about it at the time in order to flag up that the autistic population is especially vulnerable to sexual assault, to abuse. And so it is almost all the more important that we respect consent and we seek consent in order to just be doing the right thing, like you should always be asking for consent in these situations, but also in order to guard against the risk of all the things that could be triggered for somebody if your accidental forgetting, you know, that, that doctor meant me no malice, that doctor was there to care for me, they were not there to abuse me or hurt me or anything else, they just forgot to ask, it was just a slip up on their part, but that slip up on their part put me back into all the situations that I've experienced that connect to things being done to my body without my consent and that for somebody else those experiences could be more significant. And then I was thinking about it afterwards and it's an odd one. If you think about consent, our understanding of consent and the ownership of our bodies is changing through time and one of the ways I see this reflected is in the way we parent small children. Like I have a four-year-old and he's very cute and people come round, aunties, uncles, grandmas, grandpas and want to cuddle and want to kiss and I would never make him cuddle anybody he doesn't want to cuddle or kiss anybody he doesn't want to kiss. Currently it's not an issue for me because he would merrily kiss anybody and cuddle anybody um, but were there to be somebody who wanted a kiss goodbye or wanted a squeeze and he didn't want to give it when I was a child I would have been told kiss granny you know kiss auntie give them a cuddle whoever it was and I would have done as I was told somebody else would have told me what to do with my body but my children it's their choice what they do with their body. And that's not me. I'm not doing anything groundbreaking there. That's very, very common for parenting, for contemporary parenting. We don't force, we teach children, the things in your pants are yours and yours alone. And you decide who you're going to kiss and who you're going to cuddle. And if you say no, it means no. We do a thing when we play tickling games. We say, if you say stop, you stop. Because we're teaching consent all the time. And we're teaching that you own your body and that nobody else is allowed to do stuff to your body. Do we teach that to autistic children and to children with learning disabilities? You know, where does that vulnerability come from? Why is it two to three times more likely that autistic children have been abused? It's, it's nothing to do with being autistic. Autism is just a different pattern of wiring in the brain. It doesn't, having a different pattern of wiring in your brain doesn't advertise you to sexual predators. What creates that vulnerability? It's all sorts of things. So if you don't use mouth words, if you couldn't tell, you're more likely to be a target. But also, if you're somebody who's been taught that reliable grown-ups are allowed to move your body, that trustworthy people, people you love and respect, have agency over your body, over you. Basically, if they're allowed to move your body for your own good, then what you're teaching is that somebody else taking control of your body is not necessarily a bad thing. And can you see how that seeds that vulnerability? There are all sorts of therapeutic approaches out there. So 
really simple things like communication approaches where part of the approach says you pick up the child's hand and you use the child you show the child physically show the child what they're supposed to do with their hand and you do that by manipulating their body any time that we're taking control over somebody else's body without their consent and we're doing that as a reliable person we are teaching them that that's okay to do and it's that secondary learning like I hope that makes sense. There were other things that came up from that post that you wouldn't have seen online because they came up in my messages and I'm going to talk to you about them in my next video.